So I almost gave this thing out, you know. Let me turn it this way so you can see it in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I almost gave it out. And um, if you actually don't know what that is, it is a teleprompter and it makes recording YouTube videos and I would say other videos much easier if you're in a control setting. It's often used with a script which is projected onto a screen. You click play and read it out or you read out what you have written. Now, when I bought this thing, which I'm actually using to record right now, I even went to the extent of giving it out because uh, I didn't like using it, as I mentioned in one of my videos about how to talk to the camera. What I said in that video was that the teleprompter didn't make you feel natural. But today, I love it. I actually swear by it. But quick disclaimer though, I am not being paid to talk about this particular product. It's something that I bought with my own money to change my YouTube workflow and it's doing just that. So I love it. So anyway, let's go. Let's get on to today's uh, vlog where I'm going to share my simple workflow on how I script and use the teleprompter for my videos. You know, there are different types of vlogging. The most traditional one, which most of us know, is the one which was made most popular by the YouTube giant Casey Neistat, which he does every single day. It just it just blows my mind. I don't know how he does it, where you hold your camera and talk to it and manage to do your other activities while telling, you know, your stories in different locations. And it's just, you know, for that, you can't mount the teleprompter and be walking around with it. And then there is the type of video or vlogging which I'm doing or which other YouTubers do where you just sit and talk to the camera, whether it's storytelling, whether you're sharing tips or reviewing products, you can do this particular type of vlogging. There are many ways to do this and this is how I do mine. It's a common style, but it takes time to perfect. And when you do, vlogging becomes way easier, especially if, for example, English isn't your first language and you have difficulty keeping your train of thought intact without making too many mistakes or taking way too many pauses. So I'm going to go on to the scripting part or scripting aspects. But before I jump into that, let's note a few things. Scripting is part of your pre-production and pre-production is an important aspect of your filmmaking or vlogging. So you are producing content and the first thing that your audience expects is that you have something to talk about and not just come and sit and talk about random things incoherently. It doesn't work that way, like jumping from topic to topic without finishing any of it. So under pre-production, there is the coming up with topics to film and that can be the most difficult thing, you know, trying to churn out content when you don't know what to film and how relevant or beneficial it will be to your viewers. So a lot of thinking or a lot of research happens on this part, knowing what your channel is about and gauging what might be beneficial to your audience if they watch your videos. So you have to think a lot. Sometimes you don't have time for that research and some weeks are there that you're blank and not inspired. There are some other times where you have so many ideas, but you're not sure which one will be a hit or a miss. So it's really difficult. So what I do is I tend to make a list of topics that are like my safety net topics at least four of them, at least, because I post every week. So that in the event that I have nothing to record or new inspiration hasn't found me, I can record one of the topics that's on the list. So try and come up with like a content list or video ideas and then turn it into some kind of content calendar of sorts, which, you know, you can always fall back on and not miss out on posting a vlog if you do it every week like I do. So let's say we have the topic for the week. What next? So for me, I find it easy when I script it. Yes, scripting everything I would say, exactly how I would say it. So let's go into the scripting now. Over here, the basic rules of essay writing applies. That's what I would say. It's storytelling and I believe you agree with me that you should have a beginning, a middle and an end. Intro, body, conclusion. Now, I cannot tell you how to write creatively because that's a whole course on its own, but I try as much as possible to write it in my own voice as I would normally speak. And note that although I said the basic rules of essay writing applies, you're not writing a book or writing a thesis. So simplify your language just as you would talk. So what you are hearing now was first typed out 
exactly how I wanted it. And I usually start with some kind of premise about what I'm going to discuss and use it as my introduction. Sometimes the intro is filled with, you know, some generic definitions related to the topic I'm about to discuss to make it comprehensive. Other times I introduce it with a personal experience about the topic. And um, it can also be both, a bit of both. There's no right or wrong way when it comes to your intro. Whatever it is, try and make it punchy enough so that it draws the viewers in to view more of what your video has to offer. I would say a bit of both is your best bet because it immediately establishes some kind of relatability if the audience can connect with your experiences from scratch. Remember that. Now let's get to the body. After the introduction, well, I then flesh it out with what's to be expected about the topic. And this is where your knowledge of the topic comes to play. However, you may be very knowledgeable, but you're not able to express it well. That is why the body is important. This will, I mean, come off as you lack an understanding on the topic. And as I say, if you can't explain it as simply as possible, then you don't understand it. So you save yourself a lot of headache if you can give this part of your script writing some kind of arrangement or structure so that your storytelling or in this case, given tips can be easily followed. So break it down into the simplest form and if possible with some examples and analogies to keep you know the core of that relatability running through it. If those watching you can hear and feel you in what you're sharing and not like you went to pick some generic things off the internet, then it will always sound better. It's a vlog. You're sharing bits and pieces of you anytime you turn on the camera and the mic to record. And uh, you need to make sure that it's felt in there. So what I do is I'm talking in my head as I type, like I've already mentioned before. And I feel that it makes it easier to know where to pause and where to, you know, emphasize what. And if I need to start a new train of thoughts, I put two lines between or I press enter twice so that I can have space. I often refrain from long sentences or paragraphs because I learned that it didn't sit well with the teleprompter and how it works. I'm going to tell you how it works. It usually scrolls on the screen. So if you don't space it out and time your pauses, you find that you're actually chasing your own script and making a lot of mistakes. There's also another way to go about this where people prefer to use outlines or pointers written down. So after expressing yourself on each point, you look at what's next and you talk again. This means that you need to do some work during your editing process, but this style is also a viable option and it's allowed. But if you came here for tips on scripting, then your biggest, perhaps most important tip is that if you can make it or if you can make sense of it, then your chances are your audience will also make sense of it. It's not about complex language. If you can't explain what you don't understand, then you're not doing anything. So keep it short and simple. That is a KISS strategy. After that is done, the Parrot teleprompter that I use comes with an app, which will also help you to project onto the screen. It comes with a remote to start, stop, pause, and increase or reduce the speed of your text, which you're reading. Your phone or your tablet may be used to project the thing onto your screen or your script onto the screen. And the only tricky part is spacing out and arranging your script to the point where it's not too slow or too fast, as well as, you know, taking all your pauses and places, uh, yeah, into emphasis. <laughs> The only tricky part is spacing out or arranging your script to the point where it's not too slow or too fast, as well as taking all your pauses uh, into consideration and places that you want to emphasize into consideration. That differs from script to script and person to person, depending on how you talk. Like I've said, I have learned to master it and it has made my recordings way easier and much more controlled and properly timed. For example, an average word count of 1,500 words will give you a video of this duration or slightly longer if you speak slower than I do. If you like this little explanation of my or breakdown, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps. And if you don't like it, well, maybe you can give it a thumbs down twice. That helps as well. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, my name is Kwame. And when I'm not YouTubing, I'm doing voice acting and shooting documentaries. I hope to catch you again another time, sharing more of these things, hopefully to make your YouTube workflow a bit easier. Peace for now.